What are your biggest controversies recently? Um, people are calling me a cuck. They're calling me cucko. Why? Um, <laughs> oh, no. Cucko in the chat. Like, I'm getting a lot of that. Um, <laughs> so a couple months ago, I was on a podcast, and I talked about... So I have an open relationship with my girl, and yeah. I wanted to... I got an open relationship with this girl, too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so funny. I see what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and I told the story how we went to, uh, we went to a, a play party. We went to a sex party, and... I thought, like, because I want an open relationship, like, she's seen me with other women, I thought that it'd be, like, fair if I saw her with another dude. And so we, like, swapped with a couple, and I ain't like it. And Of course not, because men are jealous. So, of course, you wouldn't like it. Because um, men and women are different. So the point is that if a guy sleeps with another girl, it makes him more attractive. But if a girl sleeps with another guy, she's a cheater, there's something wrong with her, she's unattractive, she has an end count of plus one. Yeah. Of course he wouldn't like it. And then we stopped. But you watched. For for three pumps. I saw <laughs> I saw three pumps and I was with his girl on top and I was like, huh, huh, and it just like I'm like nah and I walked out the room and then she walked out the room too, which is like, okay, okay. Um, and that was the end of the open relationship? No, it's still just open. the end of just doing just it. The just the end of, of him watching End of me it. being a cuck. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was yeah, the yeah. end of my cuck experience. Yeah, it lasted yeah. three pumps. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no. You don't stop being a C-U-C-K. Um, you don't stop being one just because you're not watching. If you're in an open relationship, the, it's much easier for the girl to get, to get laid than you. It doesn't matter how attractive you are as a guy. So, yeah. Um, I'm afraid to tell you that you've been a C star CK the whole time, Sneeko. Um, he didn't. He didn't like that. Three pump like it. Three so how, did the, how did the guy while like watching you get sma smashing his chick? Um, I couldn't. Bro, I couldn't get you it up get for it his up, chick. That's bro. Bro. Oh, that's I couldn't get it up for his bitch. That must be problem, super common. Dude. No, because there was a couple things going on, and so I want to talk about this in the podcast to, to talk about this open. Right. Uh, yeah, what was going on is he was so distracted, he was so uh, insulted by by what was going on that he couldn't. I I understand totally. Also, he was dis he had a disgust response. Men have an inherent disgust response to uh, um, girls that are uh, the s uh, sorry that, that are the the garden tools. So that's that's what happened there. Um, the disgust response kept him from having a well, you know relationship from like a, a humbling perspective are you on a press tour to talk about this right now <laughs> no bro no i i wanted to just talk about it once like mad long and ago get it over with. and now since i started streaming like okay. i get all these haters and like he's a cuck he's a cuck and like these people are like watching my videos and watching are they hate watching you or like are they kind of like i have a lot like, of hate like, watching cheek trolls no no of? they're like so we I, like I, him but we kind of taking the piss or i made like gay jokes like so there's these self-improvement youtubers and they were like stretching and stuff like that and they were in short shorts and i was just calling them gay because they're stretching in the camera it's just funny like okay. hey yo just simple stuff and they get mad like his character he's lost his purpose he's not even going to the gym and he's a cuck like people will try to ruin your life because yeah. you made a joke and then i'm like guys like do you really think it's like why do you think that they said that they're trying to ruin my character yeah. i saw like a indeed hello and welcome to the helios blog my name is helios here for another reaction video if you're new to the channel like in the content hit that sub hit all for notifications if you'd like to support me i do have a patreon with exclusive content patreon.com slash the helios blog just go there and subscribe um again I have different tiers now than I used to. Um, so I have deleted videos off YouTube. That's one tier. Um, I have uh, RP literature, which I, I'm just going to read and uh, a little bit of commentary, like audiobooks, basically. And uh, I have RP scientific literature, and I'm going to read those and uh, read some articles and then explain them. So you can choose to subscribe to anyone you want. Or, you know, all of them, whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, you could also drop me a donation like Tom M. The link is in the description. Shout out to him. Let's continue. A little bit of that, just like even the last couple of days when I was looking at your stuff. But like my synopsis was more just like, dude, you're, it's like what I said where it's like you're fucking young and you're trying to figure out like what exactly you want to do. And you're like the same way that you're just going through any like phases but you're doing it in front of Publicly, everyone yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's a lot of mental stress it's fucking heavy like maybe you like, will like, be doing all this like getting pussy content for like four months and you're just like yeah you know what that was or maybe you'll more of that i don't no, know I don't even, i'm not even thinking of doing getting pussy content that's what you think it is <laughs> no 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 <laughs> getting pussy damn content. bro well, it's getting pussy content for the bull <laughs> <laughs> do you get a lot of uh like those no like, i don't uh, think you, no but you have a you you're going through your kind of like young guy smashing phase 
Isn't I mean? Aren't you out there? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And pretty public about like, yo, look at me with this hot bitch. Well, I'm like, not trying to. Bra- you have a bit of rapper energy. I'm not even trashing I, you. I, but I'm not trying to like brag about it. I'm trying to to just show that there's a way to get an open relationship with your girl. And I'm trying to He's, help. You want that to work? I I want it. Well, here's the thing. Uh, um. So Sneeko doesn't understand yet that um, it, it shouldn't be open both ways. Right. If you're going to have an open relationship, it should be one way open. She's loyal to you and you are, you know, getting girls on the side. That's called a harem. Right. Um, And now the thing is, um, according to Black Dragon, um, who um, anyway, I learned quite a bit from him, um, among other people, of course, you know, you take what you like and you you discard the rest. Right. Like the scientific method. But anyway. Um, what he said, and I am inclined to agree, is that these one-sided open relationships, uh, they'll last maximum of two years. Afterwards, uh, the girl's going to get mad, and uh, she's going to either demand that you be monogamous as well, or she's going to leave. So, just keep that in mind. You can keep rotating girls in this in this harem, right? But uh, you're not going to be able to have any kind of stable long-term arrangement like that. Um, and actually, I think this applies even to movie stars, even to rock stars, uh, like... Uh, the the one sided open relationships like I I think they're inherently unstable, um, like basically rock stars that just have so much churn right they have so many girls that are interested that it doesn't really matter they can just go from girl to girl to girl to girl, um, but for the you know uh, superior man for the top twenty percent man whatever the guy who's trying to get a harem by himself, uh, and he's not a rock star and he doesn't have a ton of like options coming in. It's a lot of work to constantly get new girls. It's basically like a part-time job. And so you can do it, or you can aim for something a little bit more stable, uh, is what I'm is what I'm saying. I, I think, actually, if, if you wanted a stable long-term arrangement where you're with multiple girls, you shouldn't uh, have, like... So, so you could be one-sided open relationship, right? Like, where you have, like, three friends with benefits, whatever, and then you just rotate them out. Uh, or... Um, you could have, you know, maybe one main girl and then some side girls. Um, and, I mean, or you could do the classic one, which is you say you're monogamous and then you're actually not, right? But, of course, I, me personally, I wouldn't advocate for that because, again, that's also inherently unstable. The second your girl finds out, then your relationship is dead. So, um, there's multiple strategies and they have positives and benefits. Uh, th- they have positives, benefits, and negatives, no matter which one you choose, Right. So if you if you choose to be monogamous, uh, it will lead to a more stable long term arrangement. But it could also lead to you getting bored. It could lead to your girl taking advantage of you. It depends on it depends on your arrangement. So just keep that in mind, guys. It's a work for everyone. Well, do you want me to know this? One of the big secrets is probably don't talk about it so much online. Would probably be the best that's right. way to do it. Right? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's because everyone's afraid of getting that reaction. But at least I'm showing what happens. No, like, it probably uh, makes it more complicated. Like if you have a chick and she's like, Yo, my you chick, can- my chick knows what's up, and she she's not even like she's not phased by any of it. And she's even getting like people in her DM stuff like that trying to like talk about me. And it's it's really not affected my relationship at all. And you that's don't good. care. I don't care about what. Like people, you like you have pretty thick skin about all this stuff. It's helped me like seeing the three pumps develops thick skin. You know what I'm saying? Like your insecurity. <laughs> that's the most insecure thing for men is seeing your girl get three pumped. And I literally, it it is indeed. Saw it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now the fear of that happening isn't as strong. So. <laughs> did- no, that's not true. Um, you can't change male fundamental nature, right? Like, um, it's not. No. Like seeing your seeing that happen to your girl, what it'll do is it will make your hind brain, your masculine nature, cringe at your girl. It will destroy your relationship because she literally cheated on you in front of you. That's what happened. Regardless of whether you agreed to it or not. You don't think there's something to that? Like, yeah, all right, now if she gets mad and like, all right, well, what if I leave? What if I... Ch-? All right, all right. Yeah, I saw it already. Saw, yeah, I see way worse shit. The threat of it, you know, okay. If you want to if you want to do that, then I'm just going to leave you. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's exactly right. But, I mean, that's what any man with self-respect would do anyway, right? Because that's where it leads, like, pretty much regardless. That's that's how it goes, right? Um, but you can't argue with the masculine hindbrain, like... Y- seeing your girl like be taken by another man like that's that's all it takes right like you know your girl's nature right there right like what she's willing to do and this is in front of you 
right? Like they say that what you allow, right, is what you agree with, right? So he agreed with and allowed that, I mean. Oh, and that he ran away also says a lot, right? Um, he didn't try to fight. He didn't get mad. He ran away. Like that shows a lot about his nature as well. All right. Here is the article by Rollo. Um, bedroom fun, lies, and statistics. Okay, I'll admit it. I had originally intended to go a bit off-brand and write a takedown piece about Ant Giggle's ludicrous pose last week about how my infamous SMV graph wasn't statistically viable, but the ABC 2020 hit piece that never aired on Friday had the lion's share of my attention. To call the post flimsy would be an understatement, but when her site traffic starts heading south consistently enough, she always resorts to taunting the manosphere to increase views and comments should only delete. It must be a lot tougher a gig for her now that HuffPo owns hooking up betas and she's expected to drive site traffic for revenue regularly. Gone are the days of the 1000 plus HUS comment threads where you're only interested in hearing your own voice. The abject stupidity of, Susie's, of Susie quoting a single unverifiable quote unquote PhD in statistics comment on Dalrock's site. From April of 2011, no less, to build a post refuting SMV evaluations should be enough to tell the story about HUS's commercial rebranding. Not to mention Giggle's desperation for viewership in an already saturated demographic. In other words, when your rebrand is essentially a 17 magazine for the 55 plus female demo, you've got your work cut out for you. Advice for you, Suze, just go back to pretending to be RP. There's a hundred other bloggers on Jezebel and a hundred HuffPo psychologists who've been doing your shtick longer and better than you. All that said, I can't help but recognize the nerve my SMV chart has struck through the internet. Oh, uh, let's open this image so you guys can see. Because um, I'm sure some of you haven't seen this. Uh, here, let me just make it bigger. Um, okay, there you go. This is the SMV graph for men and women. Um, okay, so this SMV up here, uh, the left, the, the y-axis, so to speak, the one that goes up, is 1 to 10. That's attractiveness, like SMV, uh, bedroom fund market value. And the x-axis, which is the one going left to right, um, it just says age, right? So the pink is obviously women and the blue is men, okay? So as you can see, uh, it goes up starting at 15, where the girl uh, is a, what, five? Goes up and up and up and up and up until she's, let's say, between 18 and 23. She's at the highest value. Um, this is the peak for, for girls. Then it starts to go down and it sharply declines starting at 30, which is what they call the wall. Um, and then goes down, 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 down until it's basically nothing at the age of 50. Even at 45, it's basically nothing. Um, okay. Now for men, at 15, their SMV is literally zero or one. They're invisible. Goes up very little to about three when they're 20 years old. Um, even a bit more at 23 you see so you can just imagine those athlete guys who are hooking up with girls how much of a statistical outlier they are compared to the average man right and then you can see the smv goes up and up and up and up and by the age of 30 guys smv is about five so their smv at 30 is about the same as women's after it's declined sharply right and then men's smv starts to go up and up and up and up until they reach their peak at about the age of 40. and this is of course only if um, men work on themselves, they keep themselves in shape, they increase their money, they increase their status, they, et cetera, right? They increase their social circle, et cetera, et cetera. Because men's SMV is based not just on their looks, it's also based on the other intangible, uh, sorry, the other tangibles that they provide, right? And then you can see men's SMV goes down much, much, much slower, which is why men are able to have children at 55, at 60, right? Even at 50, um, unlike women, basically. Um, so that's that's the idea there, um, in case you've never seen this SMV graph. And the SMV graph also explains why um, women try to buy, a, you know, stick the landing, quote-unquote, at 30 years old. Because at 30 years old, you know, the, the, the social rule is get with somebody your age, right? So they can get a guy who's on the way up as they're on the way down, and it's the best trade-off for them, right? Because you can see at 35 how low their value is compared to a 35-year-old man. That's the point, right? They kind of stuck the landing. Now, before the life plan was this, 
Um, men get women at their peak when they're 20, right? They have children then. Man's value starts to go up as women's value goes down, but it doesn't matter because the man has gotten the best of the girl and the girl gets the best of the guy in the long term. That was the old deal. But the new deal is uh, they give away their best to Chad and uh, your SOL. That's the new deal in 2023. By the way, happy new year, guys. I forgot to say that. Um, okay. So all that said, I can't help but recognize the nerve that my SMV chart has struck throughout the internet. I'm not just talking about the manosphere proper here, from recognized psychology sites uh, to bodybuilding.com. This chart is easily the most linked to picture from the rational male. Whether it's about reputing its accuracy or comparing how my instinctual understanding of SMP valuations gel with more scientific studies, the graph has become a benchmark or at least a starting point for a better understanding of comparative SMV over the course of a subjective lifetime. A lot of the original post's intent gets misconstrued, usually as the result of bruised egos still invested in blue pill social conditioning, but also uh, women um, who are understandably threatened by the prospect of having their long-term bedroom fund strategy chronologically laid bare for men to prepare themselves for. I've restated this repeatedly, but this graph was never the result of some scientific analysis, rather it was the result of observation and correlation, and I dare say that my graph lines um, line up scarily to most quote-unquote statistical studies. Nonetheless, Aunt Sue's plea for site traffic um, made me aware that I should address some of the most common criticisms of the Tomasi SMV graph. So let's start with Dr. Kelly's assertions, quote-unquote. These graphs are wrong because with a fixed number of people in the world equal between the genders, you have to scale the curve so that the area under each curve is the same, uh, i.e. the top-valued man is not a 10 ever. He's some relatively lower value scaled by the fact that men's bedroom, prime, bedroom fund prime lasts longer. Why is this? For the non-math geniuses out there, because if there are 50 men who are 7.5s, so there are only 30 women, then there's then men's actual score and actual value in the dating market is downgraded because you can't just choose a 7.5 and take her. He's downgraded by competition in the market. You can read Kelly's entire comment at Dull Rocks, but her analysis is fundamentally flawed for the same reason the three-year-old OKCupid graphs are flawed or statistically limited. This flaws the assumption that um, SMV evaluation is in any way relatable to whom a person is actually pairing off with in the short or long term. As I stated many times before, quote-unquote wants got nothing to do with it. Desirability and peak bedroom fund market value and capitalizing upon that peak have nothing to do with monogamy. However, this is exactly the context I would expect from solipsistic women relating any and every detail of the SMP to how it fits into the feminine narrative. Though it might be a tall order, I'd love to see a study done on how women's um, cycle influences their short-term breeding with who they pair off with in long-term monogamy. Uh, okay, so this was uh, from a couple of comments made on the Curse of Potential. With regards to the SMV graph, are you saying a 40-year-old guy is going to have an easier time picking up a 22-year-old girl at her SMV peak at a bar than, say, a 27-year-old? I don't know if I'm reading it correctly, but it appears to show a man of 40 is having almost twice the SMV as a man of 27, which doesn't sound right to me. Almost all the hot young girls I know with other young, maybe a couple year old uh, dou douchebags, not 40 year olds, or even 38 or 35 year olds. I mean, unless you're Leonardo DiCaprio or something, obviously there are exceptions. But even outside my circle of friends, when I go to the beach, the movies, the bars, I don't see a lot of young girls with way older guys, as your graph would suggest, advising us to wait till we're in our late 30s to settle down and promising we'll land 22 year olds if we keep up our game. Seems like bad advice. Not to mention, you're giving a lot of single dudes in their 20s false hope, like, hey, can't pick up a girl at 29? Just wait till you're 40 they're going to be all over that girls definitely hit the wall harder and sooner than guys but if men really peaked at that age you say then again um at least a sizable minority of the hottest youngest girls would be with them and they're not salad days misunderstands the premise of men's potential here one of the most common criticisms i get especially from disgruntled women is salad's observation as a mid-20s girl there's no way i'd ever be attracted to some older guy once again, pairing and mutual attraction has nothing to do with SMV, especially so when a woman is experiencing her peak bedroom fund market value. The feminized thinking presumption here is that like should attract like. The 20-year-old SMV peaked uh, hottie should be attracted to and interested in settling down with a 37-year-old in shape potential maximized game aware man. Uh, if SMV is indicative of one's ability to attract the most desirable members of the opposite gender, then presumably those in the upper epistles of SMV would want to pair with each other. Equally, uh, uh, so we can infer that the hottest 23-year-old girls will generally hook up with 38-year-old men. And as much as I'd like that to be true, 27 years of experience tells me otherwise. Girls that age don't tend to date men that old. There are exceptions. They have daddy issues or the guy's really wealthy and some other girls dig that. Though they're certainly not my type. 
I believe it was Aristotle who said that the best years to marry were 18 for women and 38 for men. In a vacuum, this might be an idealized situation, but the mistake is comparing female peak SMV with male peak SMV. A woman of 22-23 has nothing like the benefit of life experience a potentially optimized man of 38 will have. The comparison shouldn't be made between peaks, but rather within the peak SMV span between the genders. Even Aunt Giggles concedes that when polled, most women will say they want to marry between 27 and 30. Conveniently, this is exactly the point at which men's SMV is on its ascendancy and women's SMV drops to an equitable level. What's ironic is that for all the hand-wringing about how a female 23-year-old should or shouldn't be attracted to older men, no one has anything to say about 20-year-old women being attracted to or wanting to settle down with men of 36 to 38. They titter and giggle about the half plus seven rule, while its advantages to their bedroom fund strategy in their phase of life, but only insofar as it benefits women's bedroom fund pluralism. When the age ratios of half plus seven formula are strategically favorable to the feminine bedroom fund strategy, the response by the feminine is one of enthusiastic embracement. Once that ratio progresses to the point uh, it becomes a bedroom fund strategic liability or even a source of anxiety, the response is scorn and shame. All right, back to this video here. Yeah, I, did you did you stock up on Viagra? For what? For for the next one? For the for one. Or were you raw? Or were you going uh, in with n no PEDs? Nah, I went in. I went in. You know what? I think I did tip pop a honey for that party. You so have to. I think I did and pop it did a honey. Nothing. Bro, just like the the fucking. It was. I think it was the first. It was the first. We've we've been back. We've we, we've we go back now. But that was the first one. That experience that I talked about, and I was just like, whoa, like performing in front of fucking people. My bitch is on a bed with someone else. I'm here with this guy's fat girlfriend. Like it was just. <laughs> it was just That's a good trade for him. You're yeah. saying that? Yeah, I'm like that was part of. He's like, I'm downgrading. Like why? Did <laughs> he get an upgrade and I get a downgrade. That's not fair. That's not fair. Well, what you don't know, right, is that most of these bedroom fund parties are with average or below average people. So that's how it goes. That's the swinger lifestyle. <laughs> the swinger, swinger people look that's like right. they're at the DMV. They're not really like extremely we, looking people. We used to do comedy at this place outside of Toronto and it was straight called Oasis Swingers Club. And yeah, you're like, honestly, you're going, I don't Library know. people. You yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. And Walmart we're the youngest people, like Walmart people there. People. Walmart people. Yeah, we're yeah. the youngest people there. My girlfriend's hot. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's all these people that are oh, looking at my yeah. girl like, <laughs> like, uh, why are you, you all look hungry staring at my girl? <laughs> like, this is not a fair trade off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, they should be paying that's, you guys. That's so funny that you fucked this guy's fat girlfriend and he got your And he's like, yeah. He got your like, like, why you look so excited right now? Yeah, like, the guy's like, I love swinging. You're like, I bet you do. <laughs> yes, yeah, he goes, course, he's like a hot Instagram chick and he's like, fuck, you're fucking, fucking barb. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying, moving up her fat roll so I could get inside, bro. Like, this is not a fair exchange. <laughs> this guy's trying to give you props. <laughs> wow. That's. That's like like a quadruple insult, by the way. Oh man, that's horrible. That's so that's funny. funny. That's funny yeah. shit. So but yeah, you learn. You, you live and learn. That was yeah. the first one. So basically, <laughs> I'm obsessed with how 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 was she? Uh, I had to. I like there were walls in the way. Like she. I was Why like, didn't you say? Hold on. When your chick was like, "How about we start with these two? Because she like, doesn't no, care. No, no, she no, doesn't. No. She's not thinking about the attractive level. She's just like excited. Was the guy gross too? He was he had purple hair. He was like bisexual. Oh, that was one of those. If, if you listen to the podcast, like he was like open like those guys are known to have gross girlfriends too. Yes. <laughs> and those guys they like swinger parties because they don't get grossed out by other balls. Because they're gay. Because they're a little <laughs> gay. Like I don't like being in the vicinity of other open hairy balls. Like yeah. I'd be like she'd be on top of a turn off. I'd be with my girl and then like guys are just walking up like dick out trying to like angle in to get a hole. I'm like, bro, yeah. like a little bit of space. A little bit like your eyes would be closed, you open up and you just see dicks like bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the type of guys that are comfortable with that are like a little you know, I'm there Why are you there is my question. Like, this is unbelievable to me. Your girlfriend convinced you to allow like to allow this? Like how weak are you? Uh, anyway, okay. <sighs> anyway. Um yeah, let's move on to the article. I'm a little bit scarred by that. Okay, this is from Relationship Advice. Posted 18 hours ago. Uh, so the guy is 30, the girl's 28. My wife laughed at my biggest insecurity. My biggest insecurity throughout my entire life is my troubles with premature, you know. It's terrible that as a third-year-old, my length to the O word is terribly embarrassingly quick. 
Exes have aired this out publicly and I've become a laughing stock on a few occasions because of this. I'm literally too pump chump. My wife and I have been together for several years, so she obviously knows. Now, during our eight years together, I've done everything I can to try and hide it or not making it as bad. Basically, the, the girl is encouraging the guy to be a loser because uh, it makes it easier for her to lock him down. That's, that's what it is. And uh, as a result, he's miserable, but it doesn't matter because later on she's going to get the cash and prizes anyway. Uh, throughout our relationship, she claims that she's satisfied and happy. Uh-huh. But I can see the shift in body language and attitude that rolls in after I, you know. The last few weeks, I, it's gotten really bad to where she sits on me and it's immediate. I've done what I can to rectify this with lots of different strategies um, and uh, it didn't work. Oh, but the other day, I wanted to d do a deeper dive. Long story short, I realized that I'm literally a textbook one and on the worst scale of it. They say one to three minutes is, you know, but on any given day, I'm under 30 seconds. It's a really hard realization for me to come to and it made my confidence absolutely tank. On our morning commute today, I was talking to my wife about this and I wanted her to know why I've been off when I explained to her how I'm a textbook la 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 and on the worst scale of it, not just barely. And she burst out laughing. Hard. I was just shocked and didn't know what to do. She knows it's my absolute biggest insecurity and I was just trying to talk more openly about it and her first reaction was just to laugh at me. Yeah guys, so let this be a lesson to you. You don't talk openly about your your insecurities. Ever. <clears throat> now she said it was a knee-jerk reaction she didn't know was legit terminology. She apologized and tried to console me when I didn't immediately accept she got upset and said that I'm giving her anxiety and ruining her morning by not accepting her apology. I then spent the rest of our morning commute consoling her. I'm at a loss here. Yeah, so who rules the relationship? That's, that's what you need to know. All right, let's look at the upvotes here. Uh, 800 upvotes. Have you spoke to a doctor about this? Uh, 215 upvotes. Have you seen a doctor about this? There are medicines combined with stuff that can really help. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, like, okay, let's look at this comment and I'll say why it's disrespectful. Sounds to me like she laughed because it was sort of obvious. Like, if you super seriously said, um, you know, I'm a premature la la la, like it was a huge revelation, and she's been seeing you do it in 30 seconds for years, it's probably a, a well, duh, sort of reaction. Though her getting defensive about her reaction was rude. I think you two just need to have a mature conversation so it won't happen again. Uh, yeah, um mature conversation i think we're past that okay we're going to end the video there again guys if you're new to the channel liking the content hit that sub hit all for notifications if you'd like to support me i do have a patreon with exclusive content patreon.com slash the heliest blog just go there and subscribe um you could also support me by leaving a uh, a donation like tom m here link is in the description shout out to him thank you so much guys for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to the video especially if you listen to the end you guys are wonderful Thank you so much and I will see you next time.